Okay, the Houston Texans are taking another, let's call it a flyer. They're taking another flyer on a player who has been decent, I guess we'll say. Um, nope, nope, we haven't. He has not been good. It's a flyer on a very high upside type player, but also a player where you have to ask the question, when is the upside gone and he's just not good? And this isn't the first player they have like this at that position. So we are going to absolutely talk about that, what it means for the roster, the potential that is there. It is there, but also um, what that tells us about how this team is going to play defense this year. Before we do that, if you have yet to do it and you've watched a couple of our videos, please consider hitting that subscribe button. Um, we're always looking for a good subscriber base. That just lets you know when <clears throat> we have new videos coming out so you don't have to miss one of our videos and hope that it shows up on your home screen. Um, so we want to be your go-to place for Texans content. Um, hey, you see the Nico Collins there. Um, we have become big fans of the Texans. We are Lions fans. We have another channel called Sports Talk Detroit, but uh, we have a love for NFL teams, especially ones that the media ignores. So no Cowboys videos on this channel, all right? So anyways, I um, just wanted to hit that up first. So the Texans have gone out and they have signed cornerback C.J. Henderson. This is one that we kind of saw coming uh, honestly, for a little while now, all right, C.J. Henderson, who is only 25 years old, was a top 10 pick, <clears throat> yeah, you heard me right, by the Jacksonville Jags in the 2020 NFL draft. He is out of Florida. He has not had a good year. So unlike the other corner that you signed to a one-year prove-it deal who has had glimpses of a good season, all right, and Jeff Okuda, C.J. Henderson has not had a good year yet, so I want to temper some expectations, but this does tell us a lot about what the Texans can do defensively, so I don't want you to turn the video off even though I'm being honest with how I feel. I do think that there is something there with C.J. Henderson. Um, there is something there. The problem is when you look at any metric other than just how is he as an athlete, all right? How is C.J. Henderson as an athlete? And we'll get into that as well. Um, he's It doesn't grade out well, all right? So let's first look at who he is as an athlete, and you can see why um, he was drafted so high coming out of college. Um, he's fast. He's explosive. He can jump, all right? He has good size at six foot to over 200 pounds, um, almost 6'1". Everything about him screams elite. In fact, um, he had a 9.97 RAS score. Again, this is on a grade of scale of 10, and that compares him to all other corners that have tested. But when you look further into what he has been as a player, it's not good. If you look at PFF, his coverage grade is usually somewhere in the, well, let's just say 40s. Okay, that's really bad. In fact, his rookie year is the only year he was in the 50s. His rookie year, he absolutely put together a decent year. He had a 57.9. Corners are hard to grade. They're hard to grade. All right, but I don't want to rely on the PFF grades. What I like to look at is passer rating allowed when targeted. Last year, it was a 115. The year before, a 107. All right, in 2021, it was 130 passer rating allowed. I've never seen a number that high and in the 2020 season, his rookie year, it was 111.7. There has not been a good season coming out uh, from him. Whereas Okuda last year was a 92.3. Not great. The year before that, a 97. The year before that, 150. Okay, but that was only in 26 coverage snaps, so relax. And then 2020, his rookie year, um, he was a 112. So Jeff Okuda has shown some minor improvement. C.J. Henderson has not. He just has not been good. And I know what some people might be thinking. Well, Steven Nelson was put in this defense and he had a career year last year. That's kind of true. All right? It's kind of true. But if you really look at the numbers, I would say he put together a season in Kansas City and a season in Pittsburgh back in 18 and 19 that were just as good, if not better. I wouldn't call it a career year last year for Steven Nelson. I would call it a resurgence year. And that's where I have hope. When you look at this defensive system, 
where it goes, all right? What it was in San Francisco and what it's already kind of shown to be in one year in Houston, all right? In one year in Houston, it's already started to show. Derek Stingley Jr. went from, is he a bust to, is he one of the best corners in the league? Is he a lockdown corner? He might be, all right? It has seen guys like Jimmy Ward at safety continually have success. It has seen guys like Emmanuel Mosley find success. Lenore, like, I mean, there are a bunch of players that should not be great players or have not had, um, Tredavious Ward, right, have, have not had just ridiculous, like, careers, um, have the best year of their career because it's friendly to them. And one of the reasons it can be friendly to them is because there is good pass rushing alongside with it. And they put a corner on each side and they don't ask the corners to do too much. They have to be very good at a more limited amount of things so they don't have to think and do as much. And then when they get that confidence up and they ask them to start doing more, they have the confidence to do it. So how do you not put as much pressure on the corners? Well, one of the most obvious ways is to ask them to just do a couple things, right? Be on one side of the field. The corners love it when they can just be on one side of the field. Um, ask them to play a similar type of coverage on most plays. That's good. You can blitz. That can help. All right, that can help. You can bracket the good receivers. That can help. But what helps more than any of that is a good pass rush. And right now, you have Daniil Hunter, Will Anderson Jr., all right, and Autry. You have pass rusher supreme that you can get pressure, and it helps the corner when you can get pressure by sending four. Because then you can leave two linebackers, a nickel corner, two safeties. You can have like seven players, not like, Exactly, seven players that are all defending the pass because you have a pass rush that can get home without sending extra help. You want to send an extra guy to double on Daniil Hunter? Go for it. Will Anderson's now one-on-one. -on -one. <clears throat> you want to send an extra guy to go double Will Anderson? Go for it. Daniil Hunter's now one-on-one. -on -one. You want to leave two tight ends in and double both of them or leave a running back back to chip or leave a tight end into chip and take them out of the route, go for it. Then Autry is going to be single teamed or Fatakasi. Like that's the way it works. You can't double everyone. So what you want to have is two or three premier pass rushers on the field every snap. <clears throat> the Texans have the ability to do that now. They do. So that is what we're looking at. This signing is more about saying, here's what's important to us. And it's clearly the upfront. They have Stingley and the rest of it. They'll just continue to build around. Obviously, I would not be shocked to see them take a corner with one of the second round picks. Would not be shocked at all and kind of excited to see what the draft is going to look like. But for now, take a flyer on this kind of guy. Why not? You still have the salary cap space where you can say, hey, come here. If you can have a good season, we'll pay you a little bit more. You, Okuda, figure out who's going to be the starter. Um, and then the other one can continue to learn and uh, just grow. All right. Thanks for watching. Subscribe. See you on the next one.